Hi, great to see you back in a part three, which is about informed speaking. What is informed speaking? Informed speaking, when you guys are speaking on the spot, somebody asks you something and suddenly you have to respond to it. Why do we need that skill to have? This is very important when you're in a class, suddenly teacher asks you a question, and you suddenly feel the brain freeze. That is a skill we're gonna get, how to be good in the class. And if you are meeting someone and they ask you something which you already know, but you don't know how to get started, normally in the interviews, you need that skill as well. And a good impromptu speaker have a structured sentences, a clear and confident voice with the good eye contact, and the whole body goes with those words as well, which is we call body gesture using your hand and face expressions. And uh, what you should say is, is secondary as far as the learning concern in this course. Because if you say very important thing, but people cannot understand and get what you're trying to say, as compared to if you know not know much, but whatever you say, People fully understand it. That is important than when people cannot understand. So contents of the speech in an important speaking is less important than how do you say it. So how do you improve improve your uh, important speaking skills by practice? We give you a few techniques as well. One is uh, called table topics which we're going to practice today. There's another one is round robin where you make chain stories. One story start, the other person take across the story, which is great to increase your imagination as well as your speaking power. Mini debates are also good for important speaking as well. Let's see how, how to play table topics. The in table topics, one other person will prepare the topics for the group and he then he called the questions where the participants name will be called immediately after the question so everybody listen carefully what the question is about or what the topic is about then they respond for one to two minutes that's the limit you need to speak and this time we will count the time as well and the topic typical response should have start with a thank you for the question, you can repeat a question, and then you can respond to the question. And at the end, you sum up your question. This is very important. In the last couple sentences, you just sum up what you're trying to say. So people get it at the end, what you are trying to do it. And the objective of this learning is to have a better eye contact than the introduction part, more fluency, where there's no um and ahs and so, and um, you know that kind of a big pause. Remember, you need to give a pause there. Your voice is not monotone. And we talk about some of the common questions people ask. Oh, if I don't have enough information, how to respond? Don't be, don't be a brain freeze. You can get more and more confidence with the speaking practice. When you do a few table topics, you will get the idea. And can, as I said before, the contents are secondary. Sometimes if you don't have enough information, you can make them up. You can start with the rephrasing question. For example, somebody asks you a question, you've got no clue, you can rephrase it, say it again, so you have a little bit of time. And then you can, uh, sometime they ask you the information about Mars and you got, don't have a clue about Mars, you can start something you know about it. Say, look, don't worry about the Mars, I tell you a story of the, the other galaxy or other planet all right so in self-study mode we have a common question to answer which is under the workbook three you open the workbook three there will be some question asked you just need to respond to it and looking forward after these workbook completion we will have a great table topics which will be a nice to be part of